Uh, Professor Tukka is currently director of uh, RICAN, which is a, a RICAN Center for Emergent Matter Science, uh, also called the CEMS. He's truly a leader in this field, and he has led many research projects and institutes. For example, he, uh, he was the director of Correlated Electron Research Center, CERC, from 2001 and to 2008, and project leader in funding program for world leading innovative and R&D on science and technology, uh, which is also called FIRST from 2009 to 2013, and director of RECAN CEMS from 2013 to now. His research interests include the strongly correlated electrons, including transition metal oxides, electronic processes in organic materials, topological aspects of condensed matters, spintronics and optical properties of solids. He has authored uh, to around um, 1,500 publications with a total citation of uh, more than 121,000 times and H index of 155. Um, so it is yours, Professor Tukura. Yeah. Looking forward to your talk. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the kind introductions. And good morning. Uh, the time difference is uh, yeah, between uh, there and here is uh, very sh uh, small, so yeah, it's good for me. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this wonderful occasion, uh, Weibo and also Jasu. So uh, let me talk about uh, uh, emergent electromagnetic phenomena, so some examples in the topological magnet. Here I mean the topological magnet means there's, uh, uh, have some topologies in the real space in texture and also the momentum space in texture, something like typically the skyrimion or typically the, uh, the very curvature uh, monopoles, right? So in the real space topology that we just exemplified, the skyrimion or some emergent magnetic monopoles, and there that we just observed a huge emergent magnetic field or emergent even the electric field effect and also momentum space, uh, as you know, that there are lots of the interesting issues, anomalous uh, uh, quantum anomalous whole effect, and also the many uh, wireless metal physics. So, <laughs> just one. Why? Okay. And uh, this are uh, uh, the first part uh, collaborations of the SCAMU and the emergent inductions. And this is a kind of the done uh, by the Riken uh, uh, Center for Emergent Matter Science, University of Tokyo Group. And uh, the, we are long been collaborating uh, with uh, uh, Professor Nagaosa, Naoto Nagaosa, and the other uh, Arima and Arita leaders, and also the many other people. And especially, the, I just acknowledge my. Uh, collaborate, young collaborators, uh, they are mostly the assistant professors. Okay, and uh, let me start with the real space topology and what is the magnetic scamion. So magnetic scamion is actually the concept originally introduced by Tony Skyne a long time ago to describe the state of the nucleon to model a particle as a kind of the topological soliton. It's a very wise way to define the particle natures in terms of the topologies. So the, actually the, this kind of uh, the scamion is uh, in, the, in the case of the magnetic textures, it's first uh, predicted by the ex Bogdanov a long time, more than 30 years ago. And there uh, are kind of the spin textures when the peripheral region spin is going up and about the spin moment is uh, uh, show that this kind of the vortex like structures and uh, finally they go down. So if you gather the, all the spin structures into the origins, and then the, all the spin direction, moment direction, just wrap the sphere one time. So this uh, 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 coverage of the sphere, the, how many times uh, it's wrapped the sphere, it can be described by the, this kind of the formulas. It's defined by the uh, solid angles, four pi divided by four pi. It uh, just defined the integer topological numbers called the scamion numbers. So first, the scamion is first identified in the B20 type uh, compound. B20 type compound means that it's a, it's a chiral structure, lattice chiral structures, and uh, defined the left-handed 
crystal structure or right handed crystal structures at P213. So it's basically non symmetric. So the originally that these compounds tend to show the ferromagnetic interaction, and, but also uh, the spin due to the lack of the inversion symmetry, so it shows the so called the relative stick uh, spin canting interaction. It's called Jaroszynski Morio interaction. S cross S, namely the orthogonal tendency of the neighboring spin. This may form the, uh, this kind of the helical structures. Uh, the helical structure period is just described by the competition between the J and D term. And then the, it's tend to 10 nanometer to some, sometimes a sub micron scale. And uh, this uh, defines some uh, helical structure, Q structures. But under the, some constraints, uh, conditions, it shows that multiple Q structures. If you can combine these multiple Q or hybridize these Q structures, then it shows this kind of the defined two-dimensional uh, complicated spin structure. But if you scrutinize the one unit, uh, slice out, but this is a nothing but a scanning. And actually, this was first discovered by the Christian Prada group more than 10 years ago. And later, the many, many crystal shows that this kind of the uh, scanning structures. And uh, actually, the, uh, in order to define the topology, we have to know the actual uh, real space spin textures. It's good uh, to see that this spin texture in terms of the uh, Lorentz transmission electron microscopies. I skip the detail of the methodology of the transmission my, uh, Lorentz TM, but uh, it can define the two dimensional uh, in plane direction of the moment direction. And uh, this is a, a, a picture for the case of the iron cobalt suicide, just like a manga suicide or iron jabalite, it's almost the same structures. And uh, you can see that this is the uh, actual analyzed data of the uh, Lorentz stem. And you see the very nice uh, crystal structures of the, this uh, spin vortex. But if you scrutinize this spin vortex, uh, then the it's a black region is a spin moment is going up. And that, uh, also another down, the other direction going down. In between the spin show that this rotation, uh, spin swallowing habit. So the originally the compound show the helical structures, but if you apply the magnetic field, then there you can see that some condensation of the scamium particles and to form the crystals starting from here. And but of course, uh, this scamium, it can be described by the, this uh, triple Q uh, uh, density wave pictures. But uh, sometimes if you apply the magnetic field strongly, then the scamium tend to evaporate. And then the, it's just trapped by the some deficiency. So the, it's a trapped magnetic structure is something like a, this particle-like, colloid particle-like structures. So the, this just defines the particle nature of the scamium. So a uh, scamion is a many, uh, uh, some variant. Of course, uh, one scamion, uh, it's depending on the uh, definition of the magnetization, but the scamion number, the unity, it's a minus one. But also uh, we can show the another vorticity structures called anti-scamion, right? Anti-scamion, the scamion number is plus one. So the, it's a diff opposite one. So, so this is a particle and also the anti-particle. And but also sometimes compounds show the hybrid of the scamion anti scamion. For example, that this is a just elongated uh, scamion, but uh, if you cut around here, and then the, it's a, a topological charge it's around this region, it's a one half, and this uh, minus one half, this is a uh, uh, plus one half. Then the, you combine these two states, then the, you have a plus half and minus half. half. Define, defining the non-topological bubble, namely that it's an equal zero, topological charge is zero. Such a variation of the particle to the antiparticle through the it's a hybrid can be observed in the real materials. So here, the, let me start with the, some uh, emergent electromagnetic fields uh, enabled by these topologies. First, uh, let me uh, let us consider the some uh, uh, spin textures. It's composed of the Three canted spins. The people call that this a non coplanar structure, the scalar spin chirality structures. And their spin is mutually canted. So if you assume the electrons popping around the, this local spin, then the electron spin 
direction is uh, forcibly aligned by the local spin due to the thermal coupling, FD, uh, CF coupling, or condo coupling, or sometimes uh, double exchange coupling. So the, in that case, we can define the scalar spin kinetic. It's a S dot S cross S, uh, namely the, this uh, three spin is mutually counted with each other. It's just subtend the solid angle. This uh, solid angle is essentially play a role of the uh, phase factor. It's a uh, give rise to the phase to the conduction electrodes. So the, uh, it's a uh, nothing but a uh, uh, gauge flux or magnetic flux penetrating this spin triad. So it uh, just behave like a, a magnetic field. And then there, if the, you can, cons if you consider the skarmio structures, it's a solid angle is uh, just quantized, it's a four pi. So divided by four pi, it just gives us the integer scamion number. Namely, the one scamion is there, like this, and the conduction electron is moving around here. Then the conduction electron feels the effective magnetic fields, emergent magnetic fields. And that magnitude is a one flux quanta, and more precisely, it's a twice of the flux quanta. So the, if you have a very dense scamion, for example, one scamion per 10 nano square meters, then the, if you have a very strong coupling, then the, it's a, a conduction electron feels a huge uh, effective magnetic field, just like a conventional applied magnetic field, Lorentz field. It amounts to the 400 Tesla, very large field can be established. Now let me show the some examples. This is a manganese three side compound and we measure the whole effect as a function of the magnetic field. At low temperature, originally the, there is a, some small low IX, although the, there are uh, fairly large anomalous whole effect, but uh, in terms of the whole resistivity, it's a rather small one. But a uh, scamion phase is um, uh, in the field of, in the plane of the magnetic field temperature, we have uh, this kind of the small pocket regions. Scamion is only present in the very small windows, but the scamion is protected by the topologies. So the one scamion is uh, created and suddenly cool down, uh, quenched to the low temperature. And then the quenched scamion, once stabilized, metastabilized at low temperature, it survived for almost eternally as far as the temperature is kept low and low. In that case, this quenched scamion region, we observed a huge top flat future of the whole effect. This whole effect is nothing but a magnetic field, measure the magnetic field itself. So the huge magnetic field is just generated by the quenched scamion. And this kind of the metastability of the scamion is one of the great advantage or great natures of the scamion itself. And for example, if we make a much higher temperature scamion system, for example, in the, this beta manganese type compound, it's also the chiral structures. It's a TC is around the room temperature. Uh, sometimes it's exceeding 400 K. But uh, also the scamion is uh, always uh, appears at a, a rather uh, high temperature, close the magnetic phase boundary. The other region is uh, all helical state, conventional single Q state. Appears. However, the one scamion is created and the tiny magnetic field, something like this protocol, and just cooled up. In that case, we don't have to rapidly cool because of this compound is a mixed crystal, it's a, a lots of the disorder there. So the rather gradually cool down by way of the scamion phase, the everywhere the scamion. So this big crystal is a show the uh, full of the scamion by using the, this protocol. Right? And so the, uh, the, it's a metastable triangular scamion there, but even more interesting, reflecting the particle nature, it's a scamion crystal show the kind of the crystal structure transition as a function of the temperature. It's go down to the, this kind of the metastable square lattice structures. Now, of course, uh, this is uh, relevant to the magnetic anastrophes. But the uh, metastability of the scamion is uh, uh, very good. Even uh, we can just apply the magnetic field, very tiny field, and just cool down. And then the, uh, we can uh, keep the this um, magnet in, the, in, in our pocket, and then the, uh, go to the neutron scattering center, then the crystal is already the full of the sky, right? it's stable. 
So another important point is uh, uh, Scania dynamics. It's very easily driven by the uh, current. And usually the, this kind of the spin texture uh, uh, equation, uh, motion equation is uh, equation motion it describes so-called the theory equations. And uh, usually domain wall term is uh, this kind of the damping, uh, damping term and the dispersion term is uh, 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 important. But in the case of the Skyman case, and uh, this kind of the term is the dominant. This term is the Vs is a spin current velocity. And uh, this is the Skarmion drift, actual Skarmion speed velocity. And uh, G is uh, this kind of the M dot M cross F. This is uh, nothing but a uh, uh, Skarmion uh, topological numbers. And, uh, in general, it's called the gyro coupling vector and Skarmion number itself in the present case. So the Skarmion uh, uh, number, Skarmion is there, almost a Vs equal Vd. And it's a, uh, 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 so the, this term is the dominant. That is the reason why that we observe the very, very small uh, current density to drive the scanner in the ideal case. And, uh, and uh, if the, you have a scanner motion here, it's interesting. First, the electron flows, and then there, uh, according to this theory equation, uh, the spin, uh, spin transfer torque is just applied. And then the scanner tends to move. And also the electron is just deflected by the, this uh, emergent magnetic field, which is carried by the scanner. So because of the kind of the counter action of the electron topological hole effect, scanner also showed another direction. Uh, that this is a, some combined motion of the translational and the, this hole motion. So this is called the scanner hole effect. So this coming whole effect is really observed in the many material system. And more importantly, this dynamics of the scamium uh, particle itself cause a kind of the electric field because this carries a, a magnetic induction. So the, it can cause a, uh, to say, a electromagnetic induction. So the, it's proportional to the uh, Scamion B field and also the Scamion uh, vector uh, velocity vectors and around this region. Okay. And there, uh, the, there uh, okay, just a moment. We showed uh, some examples. And uh, this user, uh, some uh, iron germanite, typical uh, B20 chiral magnet. You see the uh, originally the uh, Scamion is here, uh, is here, okay? Okay, here. The three scamion you can see. It. And the current flow here. So the electron flow is along this direction. Then the, this scamion moved to here. Important is that this only 60 or 70 nanometer scamion, very narrow scale scamion can be visualized. Uh, and, uh, it's motion it captures. But if you apply the flow the current in the different direction, then the scamion move from here to here. Okay. And, uh, and this is uh, not so very visible for the uh, scamion hole effect, but uh, we just take another example. It's, uh, it's also the room temperature scamion materials. And the recent poem uh, also could succeed in observing the uh, single scamion motion. Okay, you can see. And, uh, it cannot move. Yeah. Current is along this direction. So the electron flow is along this parallel direction. But you see the scamion shows us some uh, fairly large hole angle is there. Of course, uh, this hole angle is the uh, opposite sign as compared with uh, between the uh, scamion and the anti scamion. But uh, this is a real scamion case. So uh, the, I, we already showed the uh, large emergent magnetic field and also the effect of the possible uh, emergent electric field. But uh, we want to enhance this kind of the uh, emergent electric electromagnetic field amplitude. And the uh, solution is quite simple. Uh, if we can have a more dense scamion system, then the uh, emergent magnetic field is eventually very large. 
So in order to realize that such a short period helix and also the small size scanning, we may use a uh, so-called RKK1 interaction. Uh, the, it's a conduction electron mediated spin coupling, moment coupling. And it's sometimes uh, interorbital frustration is make an important role. But uh, usually the uh, KF is around uh, one to 10 nanometer uh, scale. So that we can expect a very small uh, size of the scanning or helix structures. So the, but uh, in order to do this, uh, we have uh, some uh, kind of the very high symmetry lattice structure, two-dimensional lattice structure, triangular lattice or Kagome lattice, and also the higher order interaction is always stabilized thanks to the scanning according to the these kinds of theories. And, uh, and the magnetic frustration sometimes leads to the spin liquid phase. This is another big uh, uh, topics of the condensed matter uh, magnetism. But it is also that this kind of the spin helix or spin density way uh, can show up. And uh, if we have a good chance, we have a triple Q or multiple Q structures can cause this a very short small size scanning distance. But uh, we are seeking for these issues, but uh, uh, finally found as uh, some uh, very time honored compound, the gadolinium palladium silicon uh, is uh, such examples. But uh, this is a uh, gadolinium two palladium silicon, totally four, it's a one to two structures. If you are familiar to the uh, high temperature superconductor, it's a famous uh, MGB2 structure, it's the same structure. Then the, uh, the triangular lattice, uh, the kind of the uh, stage of the magnetic frustration is uh, uh, that this layer structures and the conduction electrons show the honeycomb structures, right? And uh, in this case, uh, we, we observe the series of the uh, uh, frustrated magnetic structures, IC1, IC2, as well as the uh, A phase. And uh, uh, we have not solved completely as yet the total phase diagram. It's very complicated, but uh, it's a uh, IC1, IC, and also A phase is a uh, kind of the triple Q structures. And especially the A structure is uh, nothing but the scamium lattice we identified. But uh, this is also the triple Qs, and this is uh, no emergent magnetic field it produced. So the, the, we anticipate it's a, a so-called melon, anti-melon structure. It's a very close, it's a kind of the relative between the scamium and the melon crystal. But why is this uh, non-topological? Topological charge is zero, but this is a topological unity. The fact is uh, that we observe the very large uh, anomalous hole effect only uh, around the, this scamion lattice region. And this is the example. Again, this is the hole effect. And uh, <coughs> this is a magnetic field. By changing the magnetic field along the, this direction, Along the, this direction, and uh, we observe the uh, rather top flat features again. And this is uh, nothing but uh, uh, the scalar spin, spin chirality in this emergent magnetic field, it just quantized. And so it shows a huge effect as compared with the conventional anomalous hole effect. Anomalous hole effect is not so small, but uh, this topological hole effect is so large. And it, Importantly, uh, if you apply the magnetic field along the, this C axis, and then the C uh, magnetic field is just tilted, gradually tilted, and then the, at some regions, uh, the whole effect is almost quantized, but uh, suddenly go to zero, that means the scamion lattice just disappears. But when the uh, another opposite direction, again, the scamion lattice shows up and also shows the top flat structure. One more important, uh, we don't have to, uh, uh, cannot afford to describe the detail, but uh, this uh, topological hole effect is also shows up in the kind of the thermal electric effect. Uh, people, some people are very interested in the transverse thermal electric effect termed Nernst effect. Uh, it's a, you just uh, apply the uh, thermal gradient, temperature gradient, then the thermal flow occurs. But then the, uh, in, in contrast to the uh, longitudinal thermal electric, namely the Zeebeck effect, we observe the Nernst hole effect. And this hole effect is also shows a very gigantic response around here. And this is the alpha x y divided by t. 
to correspond to the one. And the uh, important point we uh, don't describe here, but uh, this anomalous Hall effect, uh, topological Hall effect, and this topological Nernst effect show that uh, is related with each other by a so-called the motor relation. The motor relation holds uh, is confirmed to fault in this system by changing the some chemical potential in this compound. That means uh, uh, we are all, always talking about the uh, real space topologies, but uh, this uh, 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 imagine a uh, very curvature itself is uh, also generated in the momentum space, and this momentum space relation is also indispensable uh, for this observation. Okay, so uh, the one more uh, emergent electromagnetic field source that is the uh, emergent magnetic monopoles. And uh, actually, this, I just say the skyrim is a kind of the two dimensional textures. But of course, uh, in the three dimensions, this two dimensional spin texture is just uh, extended. So it shows this kind of the long uh, string like features. It might be called the kind of the direct string. Right? And so the, at the end of the one, of course, a topological charge is uh, minus one to zero or minus one to zero. So the jump of the uh, integer uh, topological charge. So this means uh, described as some singular point. Another way is that if scamion is showed the bifurcation, the scamion split into two runs like this. And then the originally here, you, we observe the scamion charge one, and this is a scamion charge two. And then there, it, there should be a, some discontinuity point defining the uh, singularity. And uh, this, in, this singularity point all show that this kind of the, uh, what we call the spin hedgehog-like structures. However, the, according to the, our famous relations to calculate the topological charge or uh, winding number counting, we just uh, convert uh, the, this spin texture into the distribution of the emergent magnetic field. Then the emergent magnetic field shows a dislike of the structures. It's nothing but uh, uh, the monopole structures. It looks like a source or a sink of the emergent magnetic field itself. And this kind of the discontinuity is actually directly observed in the real space. And this is my favorite pictures. And uh, we just prepared a rather thin uh, plate with this ion germanite. And uh, you apply the magnetic field along this direction so that you can insert the scamion string along the this direction. Then that we just observe the Lorentz term so that we can observe the, some cross section from view of the scamion string. And as we expect the scamion string with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, extending some way, but you see the some scamion string with the terminated like this. Or more importantly, it's, uh, it's uh, due to the maybe some dislocation, uh, the scamion string the, is uh, one scamion string with the change into the uh, two scamions, the one scamion string will change into two. This is a kind of the so-called the Broch point, uh, namely the magnetic monopole structure. So the magnetic monopole structure can be directly seen even by the real space observation by the Lorentz transmission electron microscope. However, the, my point is, uh, of course, uh, such a, a localized, uh, sparsely uh, uh, populated uh, monopole is also interesting, and, but uh, we just, in order to deduce a very interesting emergent electromagnetic response from the monopoles, we need a rather high density monopole crystals. How to do that? Now, essentially, the, we could find a very good way. The one is uh, just picking up the, uh, not only the mangan silicide or ion germanite, most, most prototypical B20 compound, it showed a triple Q structure and the two dimensional scamion and in the three dimensional the scamion string structure I realized. But we just replace a silicon with germanium. And then the, uh, we have a rather triple Q structure in three dimension, Q vector is along the 100010001 structure. So that we can uh, observe the hybridization of the three Q structures in the three dimension. This three dimensional structure shows a and this kind of the very complicated 
structures, but if you scrutinize uh, every uh, 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 the singular point, it's composed of the uh, this uh, hedgehog and anti-hedgehog uh, uh, dislocation uh, singular point. Of course, a uh, hedgehog is converted to the monopole in terms of the uh, imagined magnetic fields. Anti-hedgehog is uh, likewise uh, it's an anti-monopole. So the uh, in the compound there is a certainly the hedgehog anti-hedgehog point or monopole or anti-monopole point. But in between this one, the, we just see the scamion string just bridge over the monopole anti-monopole. And this is a very close relevance analogy to the case of the Dirac string and the monopole, monopole, anti-monopole is directly connect, uh, bridged by the Dirac string. In this case, Dirac string is nothing but the scamion string. So actually the, we could uh, confirm that this uh, uh, monopole, anti-monopole structure, or uh, more correctly, the hedgehog anti hedgehog crystals. And again, the Lorentz transmission electron microscope. But in this case, uh, we just observe the 2D projection. So the, we need uh, some comparison between the uh, simulations. But uh, this is a simulated monopole, anti-monopole, uh, hedgehog, anti-hedgehog crystal at uh, two dimensional projection like this. One. And this is a simulation. Maybe you can see the almost a perfect coincidence with the one. And also the temperature of the magnetic field dependence also confirms this. The other one is a small angular neutron scale, right? And uh, uh, we just shine the crystals along the 111 crystal. We just prepare the very thick uh, magajamalite MV uh, thin film. And the MV thin film is just gathered more than, uh, more than 10 MV films and just perform the neutron scale. And then there we have very nice, along the 111 direction, we have a three spot. The another, also the, this three spot is a pair. This is due to the some uh, chiral domain issues. The, the, and only the, uh, this uh, two chiral domains show up as a pair. The three Q vector is exactly the, it's a orthogonal X, Y, Z direction when you build along the 111 direction. But importantly, the, if the thin film is uh, rather thin and the uh, magnetic anastropy is strong, but then the, this umbrella tends to close. But then there we have uh, this kind of the, another kind of the hedgehog, anti-hedgehog, or monopole, anti-monopole crystal. So and uh, this monopole, anti-monopole uh, pair, uh, pair crystal shows uh, also gigantic electromagnetic response. And uh, this is uh, just a model cartoon, and uh, monopole and monopole show the uh, actually the source and sink of the emergent magnetic flux line. And uh, this flux line is uh, carried by the, uh, the scamming string. And but when we apply the magnetic field along, for example, this direction, then the one scamming just extended, and the another uh, scamming tend to shrink. So the original is a uh, total scamion number is zero, but uh, with the increase of the magnetic field, then the only the one scamion just stretched out, and then they maximize the emergent magnetic field. But with further increase of the magnetic field, then the monopole, anti-monopole come together, it undergoes a pair annihilation path. Such a process can be also traced by the, uh, the transport medium. We measure the, uh, Hall effect, whole effect is nothing but a, a measure of the emergent magnetic field. And then there, uh, originally the no, there are no uh, topological Hall effect, but uh, uh, finally the, it goes to the uh, somehow uh, longitudinal conical or uh, ferromagnetic state. But in between the uh, one scamion string is uh, stretched out. So the, it shows the maximum, it reaches the maximum. And then to go down here. And this signal is very large signals. And the another one is uh, uh, we just measure the only the no longitudinal uh, magnetic resistance. Usually compound is almost antiferromagnetic. So the magnetic field always reduces the resistivity. Uh, and you may know the case of the colossal magnetic resistance issues. But uh, uh, in this case, very surprising, when we apply the magnetic field, resistivity tends to increase, increase. At phase boundary, the maximum, then go down. 
So this is a, uh, the, uh, show, uh, the, in this point, uh, we just shoot uh, the monopole, anti-monopole pair should undergo the kind of the pair annihilation. But near the, uh, some divergent magnetic field, some fluctuation, it's almost a continuous transition. So the, uh, this uh, kind of topological transition shows a very large fluctuation of the emergent magnetic field, which effectively uh, scatter the electrons. We believe that this kind of the large magnetic resistance due to the uh, large fluctuation of the emergent fields upon the, this uh, topological to non-topological transition. So uh, the one more thing uh, the, uh, we had so far uh, almost focus on the emergent magnetic fields, but here the, I'd like to uh, sh show the another important issues. That is the generation of the emergent electric fields. It relates to the dynamics of the topological spin textures. According to the general formula, it developed by the Professor Borovic um, almost 30 years ago. And uh, we just consider the Berry connections. Maybe you might be familiar to the K-space Berry connection, K-space Berry curvature. It's X equal momentum K, but we can also define it uh, the, in the real space. So the, and it, actually the Berry curvature is uh, just a rotation of the, this Berry connection. So the Berry connection is uh, nothing but uh, uh, vector potentials. And, uh, so the, uh, the, we can have a kind of the Faraday's laws. Maybe electric fields is uh, uh, the maybe time derivative, maybe one over sheets are not the same. Uh, the, it's a kind of the time derivative of the very connection. So the, uh, in order, to, in terms of the uh, real space skin textures, we can describe something like this. It's also the, uh, uh, some along the X direction electric field is the X direction derivative of the spin moment polarization vector, but also includes the time derivative of the polarization and the end So the, this means uh, uh, if the magnetic structure is dynamically swept, the non coplanar structure, it can also generate the electric field. As you know, that we already showed the uh, uh, Scamium uh, system. Uh, it's coming and moved. It shows the uh, just kind of the electric fields. Uh, it uh, also appeared as a tiny collection of the uh, topological hole effect. But uh, we can uh, deduce a rather genuine, uh, rather large electric field. So the, the one good idea, the great idea was uh, presented by my uh, colleague, uh, the Naoto Nagosa. And uh, according, to the, according to him, the, uh, the back of the envelope calculations. <laughs> And he said that this formula can be valid for the uh, case of the spin helix when we apply the flow the current along the X direction. And then the X direction due to the spin transfer torque, the spin is show that this kind of the tilting motion. The tilting motion shows that it's dynamically swept the non coplanar spin structures according to this formula and should generate the E field along the Q direction. And again, the n dot uh, q direction signal, x signal at times the time derivative of the moment. So the, uh, the this is a kind of the electric field, and uh, this is nothing but uh, so called uh, uh, electromagnetic induction inductance. Uh, more specifically, let me show uh, that if you have a, uh, a conventional helical structure, a scanner is okay, but uh, not necessarily a scanner even helical structure, if you apply the current along this direction, so the, it shows the spin transfer torque and the compound shows the, this kind of the motion. And uh, this is that like this. And if you have an AC current, something like here, and you can see the plus and minus and the scamming uh, tilting occurs. And this tilting uh, shows the emergent electric field according to this formula. It's a tilting angle time derivative is just directly generate the electric field along this one. But uh, it's inversely proportional lambda. Lambda is uh, just a uh, spin helix period. 
So the smaller spin helix period material shows a larger electric field. But here the, it is important to consider the another motion. And this is the kind of the rotation of the uh, spin plane. This rotation spin plane is nothing but the so-called the translational of the spin moment. And this is a core in the, in the density wave physics pictures, it uh, uh, describes a phase. Uh, it's a num some mode. So the, but the important po point is that this tip, tilting and the rotation motion is uh, just connected. It cannot be independent. It's uh, connected by the uh, canonical conjugate relations. So the, anyway, uh, the, this, uh, uh, as a fact, if we have uh, some uh, time derivative of the current or AC response, AC stimulation, then the, we have generated the electric voltage by this way. So how to confirm this one? So the idea is simple. I just try the very conducting materials and uh, also the some helix structures. But uh, this helix should be realized by the some uh, magnetic frustration effects or uh, uh, conduction electron uh, magnetic moment interaction system. We are the quantum coupling, and uh, because uh, uh, such a uh, case, we just realized a uh, uh, short period uh, uh, helix structure. So the lambda is small, then it's, uh, we have a good chance to enhance the uh, electric field, imagined electric field. The, again, the, this is a uh, uh, so the lattice compound. In, in reality, it's a breathing Kangwe lattice compound. This compound itself has a lot of interesting topics, but anyway, here that we just concentrate on this kind of the helix structure. In the lowest temperature and the lowest magnetic fields phase, is the ground state of the helix. But when we, have, we apply the magnetic field along this direction, we have a transverse conical state. And also the some finite temperature, we have a scanning crystal here. And also the, with further increase of the magnetic field, it shows a fan-like structure. And this helical to transverse conical to fan structure, this kind of the sequential transformation of the magnetization is a quite ubiquitous for the many conduction uh, frustrated magnets, right? So the target is around here. It's a single Q structure, okay? So this is the answer. And uh, we just measure the imaginary part for the pi phase, a uh, half pi shift of the half pi uh, delayed component of the electric resistivity or conductivity. This imaginary part of the resistance impedance is uh, directly proportional to pi if f is the frequency and uh, l is the uh, inductance pi. Right? So the, uh, the, in the situation, uh, measurement is quite simple, it's just uh, using the locking amp and uh, apply the frequency and uh, some uh, current feed. And uh, it's not that large uh, current density. It tends to force ampere per square centimeter, right? And around here, we measure this one. And uh, as a function of the magnetic fields, the high field region is the smaller one, and but the low temperature region is the larger one. And also the, it's a one to one correspondence of the proper screw, scamion, transverse, conical, and the finally the ferromagnetic state is here. And, uh, and this uh, dark region is shows the uh, uh, higher uh, inductance values. And uh, you see the rather than scamion, this is a proper screw, and the uh, transverse conical, this uh, single Q structure is uh, show the larger uh, inductance value as expected. Right? So, and uh, basically the, uh, the pr in principle that we can generate uh, this kind of the emergent electric field and the emergent inductance. But here, the, let me compare it to uh, the two cases, uh, the conventional inductors and the conventional, uh, the present quantum inductors. Classic one is, of course, we rely on the coil. The coil is um, uh, the greatest invention in the, uh, the last century, right? And uh, uh, if you uh, have a, in, in your PC and you have a portable phone, you have a lot of the coil. And uh, usually the coil cannot be miniaturized because the inductance value is a uh, uh, winding number of the coil and also the, uh, and the coil uh, cross section. The coils, cross, uh, this is not cross section, uh, this cross section. Cross section cannot be small, right? 
in order to maintain the large inductance value. So this is a, a, a recent commercial, maybe the state of arts, uh, the small uh, inductors uh, of 0.3 micro and uh, it's this kind of the size. It's a rather small inductors. But our quantum conductors, emergent con inductors, and then there, uh, we just also the uh, winding number is appears, but this is the Q vector or inverse of the uh, uh, helical pitch period. And S is a, uh, a, a material cross section, very smaller one, we have a larger uh, electric field. So the, in, in that case, a larger element. So the, we similarly obtained 0.3 micro handy. And uh, because please care, uh, it's a minus sign. But anyway, uh, the almost comparable absolute values. But in this case, we have a very tiny micron or even some micron type scale. And just simply connected the wires. Then the, we can measure the uh, inductors. So the, it might have a very great opportunity to uh, dramatically miniaturize the inductor element, which cannot be so far miniaturized due to the, this Faraday's constraint. So, but uh, of course, uh, uh, we have to have a, a room temperature uh, compound, but uh, again, we can make use of the Kagomelat structures. The Q vector direction is quite different, but uh, we similarly observe the, uh, this uh, Ethereum manganese 6, uh, thin 6 compound. It's a very famous platform of the uh, magnetic wires in there. But anyway, it's also useful for the other purpose. And it's a, it's a helix structure is here. And like uh, this gadolinium uh, lithium aluminum compound. And, but we apply the magnetic field along this way, then the transverse conical, and uh, finally the rather more ferromagnetic, uh, so-called the fast structure, and finally forcibly ferromagnetic state. But the important point is that just compare the temperatures. It's 20 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin. And it's even at room temperature, we have a, this kind of the Q, short period Q structures, something like this. Like this. Then uh, the, uh, according to in, in one to one corresponds helical and the transverse conical and the district, uh, first the ferromagnetic state showed uh, almost a no response with the inductance value. But uh, helical or transverse conical showed a relatively large negative value. But at the phase boundary, it, it showed a rather positive values, something like this. And uh, this is uh, actually direct measure, measurement for the inductance value as a function of the frequency. So the, uh, the around one kilohertz, and uh, this inductance value is a huge. It's uh, uh, about nearly the more than five micro handies, very large but very bad read, uh, it's a, a, a frequency response is so bad. We have to improve this one. And, but anyway, uh, it can show that even at around room temperature, we may generate the emergent electric fields in terms of the high temperature screw one. So why it shows the negative to positive and why it shows uh, such a bad characteristic, we have uh, some answers at the moment, but uh, in, in order to improve the, this, uh, characteristics, we have to work more at or explore the more materials. Okay, uh, the finally, the, let me show that this uh, uh, figures. I, so far, the, I just uh, show the real space uh, uh, topologies. And so the, here that we just emphasize this uh, scalar spin chirality. It's a quantized version, it's a nothing but a scamion or in the three dimensional uh, uh, spheres, it's a magnetic monopole. This kind of the future is show up. But uh, there are the many other interesting uh, spin textures which can generate the emergent electromagnetic response. Why is a simple vector spin chirality, S cross S. Under the presence of the spin orbit interaction, and uh, it's very well known that this uh, causes a kind of the spin current, it's a, it, uh, that a permanent spin supercurrent is always flowing due to the canted spin structures. So spin supercurrent can generate the electric polarizations 
、まあ、sometimes coupled to the, some form of displacement, but essentially it's genuinely the spin current shows the genuine electric polarization. This is the basic of the multi ferroics. That is another my favorite field. And、uh, also, the related to the, this multi ferroic or、uh, magnet electric issues, we also observe the magnet electric monopole.、Uh, it's a divergence P, a divergence M is non zero. Of course, this is nothing but the emergent magnetic monopole I, I, I already described. This is another magnet electric magnetic monopole, but this also shows a diagonal response. Uh, this is the so called the action coupling. And、uh, actually, the, in the many topological,、uh, magnetic topological insulators,、uh, we observe that this kind of the action type monopole coupling. And another one is the toroidal moment. It's a spin is rotating something like here and the R cross S. And this R cross S is、uh, just almost equivalent to the LS coupling. So it's a nothing but a toroidal、uh, moment, it's a nothing but a vector potential. It also shows the electric fields、uh, responsible. It's a second harmonic generation occurs and related to the very connection. Okay, so、uh, the, I have、uh, one more <laughs> topic, s but I run,、uh, run out of time. So the,、uh, the similar、uh, case space picture is also can, considered,、uh, can be considered、uh, that it's not only the more,、uh, real space, but also the Momentum space is nothing but the quantized, very curvature of the, the quantized anomalous whole effect. And、uh, I think, uh, uh, well, it's a very, but、uh, this good, one good news, only one sentence.、Uh, we have recently attained the very high accuracy of the quantum anomalous whole effect, even at zero fields. And many people just try to、uh, increase this accuracy. But using the very special design, m u l t i l a y e r the modulation doping technique, and just measure the, this quantization accuracy in terms of the quantum hole effect, new equal to Gary m a r s e n i t e But、uh, this quantum anomalous hole system de replaced at,、uh, away from the superconducting super magnet. It's a very low field permanent magnet region. So, the accuracy is attained eight digits, it's a 10 ppb. It's just already applicable to the resistance quantum standards without essentially no, without, with no magnetic field. And that's a good news for the community. So, as I expected, I don't know the time, but maybe I, I might have a, another chance to talk about another issue. Okay. We have、uh, about five is, minutes if you'd like to talk a little bit more. Yeah, We've got five、yeah. minutes if you want to continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, I, I think i m a g i n e magnetic fields、uh, in the real and momentum space. And、uh, unfortunately, I cannot、uh, tell you the latest news of the、uh, momentum space, i m a g i n e magnetic fields, some issues. But even that these two issues are very closely related with each other. And also, the, especially the, in the real space spin textures,、uh, the magnetic texture, its size is just squeezed. Then the, it's more and more the momentum space picture has to be considered. So in the future, the term, uh, uh, huge uh, uh, of the、uh, spin texture, both in the momentum and, moment, and real space and momentum space. It should be very important、uh, for the further development of the, this kind of the imagined electromagnetic response. Okay,、uh, let's make it here. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much for the talk. So maybe next、uh, in the summer we have a talk about the momentum space, the quantum anomalous Hall effect and the topological properties. Uh, thanks for the talk in the real space for the Skirmin's、uh, topological effect.、Uh, any questions? Please go ahead. Maybe I start. So, you mentioned that、uh, there are、uh, the similarity between the real space and the momentum space by、um, uh, recovery and the, the whole body experimental、uh, demonstrations. Uh, so, what's a similar effect in these two cases,、uh, in your view? Yeah, yeah,、uh, it's a very good question. And、uh, 
especially uh, the, in the Skyrimion case, uh, the people first argued a rather long period, large size Skyrimion. So the, basically the, uh, uh, the electron fields are another kind of the real magnetic fields from the sky. Real magnetic fields is uh, of course, uh, uh, imagined magnetic fields, but it's a kind of the, uh, just like a Lorentz field. So the Skyrimion, uh, for example, the magnitude of the topological Hall effect is in proportion to the uh, this imagined magnetic field times uh, normal Hall coefficient. So the by that one we can measure the uh, largeness or magnitude of the imagined magnetic field. However, the uh, actually on the other hand, conventional anomalous Hall effect is uh, it's a uh, uh, relevant to the momentum very curvature. Some anti cross point, a wire point just open the gap, sometimes gap and connect it between each other. And then there, uh, we can have a, uh, a kind of the two dimensional quantum anomalous Hall effect. And uh, summing up the, this momentum space, we, we can observe the uh, three dimensional uh, anomalous Hall effect. However, the, even the Skyrimion is a rather smaller than the, uh, especially the uh, electron mu free pass is. Uh, that are comparable or even larger than the Skyrimion site itself. Then the, again, the, we have to go to the momentum space pictures. Then the momentum space, we may seek for the uh, very curvature point, right? Very curvature anomaly. And the most extreme case, uh, uh, yeah, one case is of course uh, this uh, gadolinium, uh, uh, this palladium silicon case. And uh, then the, uh, of course, uh, this value is so large so the maybe and also the uh, how to say uh, mean free pass is uh, several times larger than the uh, scamion site itself. So the maybe we partly have to consider the, uh, uh, the momentum space. So the most dramatic case I I, I expect is uh, uh, the quantized topological Hall effect. For example, the, if Skyrimion site is so small and the carrier density is uh, not so large, then the, this uh, spin canting uh, cause, cause uh, of course, uh, emergent magnetic fields originally in the momentum uh, real space. But then the, we have to consider the momentum space uh, real state. And then the, not simply from the anomalous Hall effect, uh, for example, the, even without any spin orbit interaction, we may find the quantized topological Hall effect. I already uh, 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 wrote uh, this dream uh, in the, some uh, uh, special uh, articles uh, of the uh, uh, celebration of the quantum Hall effect in the nature physics, uh, the, uh, celebrating the. Uh, uh, that is this, uh, 40 years discovery. But uh, I think I, it's, uh, in the near future, we can beat the such yeah. yeah, very nice. Hopefully this uh, dream can come true one day for the quantized uh, topological yeah. effect. Yeah. Yeah, Justin, you have a question? Yeah, so I had a, it, was a, it was a very interesting talk. I, I actually get lots of questions, but let me just uh, ask one first. Um, so so you, you showed this very interesting thing about the inductance. Um, which actually scaled as one over S, where S was the some cross-sectional area. Is there a simple way of understanding this um, uh, different scaling one over S? And and if and, and since you can see there's a divergence with one over S, what cuts this off? So what's yeah. the 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 minimum scale that you can go down to? Yeah, and uh, actually the this uh, the expression based on the very simple uh, expression uh, based on the tilting of the uh, spin textures. But in, in the real case, uh, spin tilting and the spin uh, rotation, the phase of mode is coupled to each other. So the situation is a little bit more complicated uh, or even more interesting. So the, in that case, uh, uh, tilting is uh, uh, the emergent electric field is uh, just one. Uh, according to this formula. Uh, this formula is just described by this one. And, uh, and uh, this formula it described by this one. So the, it's a time derivative, speed of the uh, 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 tilting motion. Right? And uh, also the 
inversely proportional to lambda. It's a Q value itself, right? Uh, inverse of the uh, spin, uh, uh, spin periodicity, right? So the, in that case, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, basically proportional to Q and uh, divided by S, uh, Q is of course uh, uh, divided by lambda. S is, uh, of course, a L value is a simply pro proportional to the current density itself. So the, uh, this is a rather trivial issue. It's a smaller size, uh, uh, this materials, and the cross section is small. So the, if we apply the uh, current I, then the, uh, if the, uh, the cross section is smaller, then the L should be large. I see, but, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, in the case of the coil, of course, uh, current is uh, just flowing the, this original, uh, this lead. And S is uh, this, uh, uh, the radius of the coil, right? So the, uh, the, even the current is increased. And in order to keep the uh, inductance value L, we need uh, lots of the, I say, I uh, the winding. This is in, in the, uh, the square of the uh, winding period, uh, density M. And also the S means uh, not uh, this, uh, sorry. Uh, and not that you can see this is, but uh, it's a it's a coils uh, radius. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's you cannot miniaturize the radius of the coil. That's right. That's right. So <laughs> I guess what you're saying is that you you have a a coilless uh, a coilless um, yes, um, yes. inductor, so you the, don't need it. Yeah, this is our inductors. Yeah, <laughs> there are no coils. Yeah, and uh, more uh, uh, specifically, and uh, we have a lot of the spin coil <laughs> within here. <laughs> I, I see. So, so, so the, the the issue with trying to make s smaller and smaller and smaller would be um, uh, just you would be passing too much current, and therefore you get to the normal. Yeah, yeah, of course, I think so that uh, finally the temperature increases or something like that. Yes, but I actually, see. what we observe the uh, current this tends to s is uh, as compared with the usual spintronic uh, current, it's uh, more than ten to tens. Mm. Or 10 to 11, so it's a much smaller <laughs> as compared to this one. And uh, even even this case, uh, maybe uh, it's a uh, ampere per cell, it's a square centimeter. It's a ve rather very small current. So, I see. Yeah. So the, see. the value itself is okay, but uh, uh, the, this uh, rather uh, the maybe, especially the frequency dependency, but, and also the it's sometimes useful, but depending on the, uh, say, uh, depending on the current, uh, current density, the sign also change mm -hmm. from the negative to positive. Oh, and okay. uh, we anticipate, maybe you are saying sorry, we anticipate uh, uh, that this kind of the phase of motion is uh, some resonance frequencies. So the uh, around the, this resonance frequency, the change of the uh, inductance value is a, a sign of the inductance value is changing. So the uh, 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 that maybe that the control of the this uh, uh, the spinning of the uh, phase on frequency, phase of motion is most important. It's a uh, it's originally the uh, number goes some more, so the, we have to pin down. So the, in that case, the phase phase on contribution disappears, and the only positive mom, uh, component it survives. But uh, we can it as compared with the phase on it, its magnitude might be small, but it can be extended to the higher frequencies. Might be uh, good news for the application. Yeah, it's very interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Kenaki. Do you have questions? I saw you raise your hand. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tokura. Fantastic talk. I, I really hope you can come back again sometime yeah. during the summer or any other time. Yeah. We would be eagerly waiting. I have two questions uh, very quickly. One is about uh, gadolinium, ruthenium, uh, aluminium 12. Yes. You said that uh, the skirmion size is very small. Yes. Is there any chance uh, that uh, we are observing quantized skirmions here? And if so, how do I couple electrons to quantized skirmions? You did mention about momentum space. 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, I think, thank you very much. It's a very interesting, <laughs> uh, uh, very important question. Uh, that it's coming outside is small enough, but uh, uh, the, the basically that this compound is uh, actually the band structure itself is uh, heavily dominated by the ruthenium aluminum uh, large dispersing D electron band. So the, in the very briefly, in uh, uh, says that it's a carrier number, it's too high. So the original uh, hole effect is very small. So that, that is uh, no good. Nevertheless, we observed a huge response in the three dimension, but uh, uh, the, in, the, in the case of the two, again, the, we have to need a two dimensional system. So the, mm -hmm. and uh, also the uh, high mobility, maybe, uh, maybe important point is that low carrier density system. So the- Okay, that, uh, oh, the, I see. Yeah. But uh, maybe some uh, recently, uh, in, in, even the these uh, 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 well, metals, we sometimes intermetallic, even intermetallic compounds, we sometimes uh, tend to find a uh, lot of the kind of the uh, wild same metal state or uh, low carrier density system. And uh, people are very interested in this one. And then the, if we can introduce the magnetic correlation in that system, I, I believe that we have a lot of chance to find out the uh, uh, quantized uh, topological hole effect. And it can be a very high temperature as compared with the uh, uh, quantum anomalous hole effect observed at magnetic topological energy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, just one uh, quick question. You briefly mentioned, uh, touched on uh, 3D uh, structures. Mm -hmm. uh, a, do they also have uh, as much um, potential or uh, in terms of materials because most materials are analyzed in in terms of 2d um, 2d cuts or 2d planes uh, yes and uh, actually that this uh, you said that this kind of the uh, triple q but that orthogonal q triple q uh, hedgehog crystals but uh, even in that case, uh, we can uh, slice some materials and uh, just uh, scrutinize, observe uh, the microscopically the uh, spin structures. And this is actually the, this one. And, I see. Uh, yeah, but it's a, uh, it's a rather, uh, yeah, maybe in the near future or long future, we have to develop the three dimensional uh, microscope. And uh, actually, the, uh, the maybe several 10 nanometer scales, uh, uh, that my colleagues uh, uh, should you already succeed. But uh, in the, such a short period structure, it's uh, really difficult to see the three dimensional structures. But if you project this one, and uh, you see, uh, sorry, <laughs> I cannot say, but uh, you see that this is a kind of the uh, spin texture contrast. But you see that some uh, another fine lattice is here. Uh -huh. This fine yeah. lattice is an uh, atomic image. Oh. Yeah. So the, uh, the and uh, this uh, maybe some uh, uh, magnetic texture periodicity is uh, maybe several times of the atomic periodicity. Mm -hmm. we, we can mm -hmm. see uh, if you can mm -hmm. compare yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then the, we have uh, some uh, imaging of the magnetic texture, infrared magnetic texture. So this is uh, corresponds to this one, and uh, this is the actual observation. And uh, from this one, we cannot uniquely deduce uh, magnetic texture, something like this or like this. But uh, uh, the, this is uh, some. This is a totally simulation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. By using okay. this one. So okay. maybe you can say the very good one-to-one -one correspondence. Yes. So we, we believe uh, together with the uh, uh, neutron scaling measurements, uh, we believe that this is a triple Q uh, hedgehog, anti-hedgehog, monopole, anti-monopole is uh, really present in this material. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Alexander, I saw you raise your hand. One last question, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Takura. Uh, like, like everyone else, uh, I have an awful lot of questions, but I'm just going to restrict myself to, to one. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about uh, the uh, emergent inductor. Yeah. Now, so far, you're using a highly metallic sample yeah. to, uh, to look for the emergent inductance at relatively low frequency, just from a phase shift in your yeah. resistance. Yeah. Have you tried using a, um, 
a helical magnetic insulator uh -huh. to see uh, to drive the spins with a microwave excitation and see an emergent electric field. Since this, I mean, it's, it's obviously not as useful for inductance at, low, at uh, low frequencies, but it would have a lot of applications at higher frequencies instead, if you could induce this uh, high frequency AC field. Yeah, uh, it's a great idea, might be. And uh, yeah, let's say, for example, in the conventional uh, uh, magnetic, uh, maybe a little bit relevant to your to your question and your motivation, and uh, even the, uh, the this is a famous example uh, the, by the band Michael, and uh, even the magnetic field, uh, yeah, say magnetic domain wall, and this yep. is a helical spin texture. Then they just apply the, uh, for example, AC magnetic field. And then the, you can drive the. Uh, magnetic domain wall. Yeah. Then and then can, you get the field uh, uh, parallel to the direction. Imagine, yeah. Kind of the imagined electric field phenomena. Uh, they just say uh, that uh, uh, generalization of the Faraday law is true, that they just uh, spin motive force, a different terminology, but it's a message the same. Mm -hmm. However, that in this case, uh, you, of course, I uh, induce uh, some uh, uh, current action. Of course, uh, we need the conductor. So your question is uh, how about the case of the uh, uh, insulators. Of course, I, as you say, the magnetic field may induce uh, this kind of the tilting or a phase on motion, perhaps. Then, the, yeah, I think it's uh, uh, some, uh, it's not necessarily conduction electron, some balanced electron can feel the electric field. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you, I mean, you, in, in principle, you would, if, if you would get an emergent polarization along the axis, I guess. Mm, yeah, 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 and uh, it's some uh, polarization modulation or mm -hmm. yeah. Then, uh, yeah, it's a very good point. Maybe it might be possible to detect uh, some AC polarization current. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I, I just wondered if you tried it yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I sometimes was thinking of that, but I, I never tried. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's a very good idea. Yeah. Thank and, you. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thanks. So, if you have more questions, feel free to write to Professor Tukura uh, after the meetings. Uh, okay. Let's thank again for Professor Tukura for your wonderful talk. Thanks uh, yeah. very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.